Practice problem number three associated with a sample problem C. A plane travels 2.5 kilometers at an angle of 35 degrees to the ground and then changes direction and travels 5.2 kilometers at an angle of 22 degrees to the ground. What is the magnitude and direction of the plane's total displacement? So uh, at the end of this uh, practice problem, we need to have a magnitude, which we'll use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out, and the direction will end up using uh, the inverse tangent function. But in order to use the Pythagorean theorem and the tangent function, or inverse tangent function, I should say, we're going to need to have one right triangle. Uh, but we don't have that right now. We actually have two different movements, right? Two different motions. And so that means we uh, at best have two, two different triangles. So let's draw this up first. <clears throat> um, let's see, I'm going to establish my coordinate system. Go plus plus, minus minus. So my first movement is 2.5 kilometers. Two point five kilometers at an angle of thirty five degrees to the ground with, with respect to the ground. So here's the ground. It's going to be going up what thirty five degrees to the ground. Right? Thirty five. I have two two angles. I'm talking about this first one here, thirty five degrees relative to the ground. Okay? And so Here's my first triangle that I will decompose into its components. But I have a second movement, uh, 5.2 kilometers at an angle of 22 degrees relative to the ground. So second movement, 5.2 kilometers. <clears throat> now, this might be a little weird, but relative to the ground, kind of that, that, that flat horizontal uh, well, direction. So here's that horizontal ground. I'm just going to draw a little dotted line so you, can, you know, for, for, relative, uh, well, for relation. So this is going up 22 degrees from that, that horizontal plane, that perfectly horizontal plane. So that's that, that angle right there is 22 degrees. And so there is my horizontal and vertical components of that second movement. <clears throat> you can see that I actually have two different triangles. And so I'm going to take uh, triangle number one, decompose it into its X and Y components. Triangle number two, decompose it into its X and Y components. And then I will be able to add both of the X components together and both of the Y components together. Once I've done that, I'll have a total X displacement and a total Y displacement, and I'll be able to draw one large right triangle with that information, and then I can use my tangent, my inverse tangent function and the Pythagorean theorem. So let's get started. Um, <clears throat> so let's do, okay, so the X displacement for my first angle that displacement one times the, let's say do an X, uh, X displacement. So that's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent to over hypotenuse is cosine, cosine of that first angle, which ends up being 2.5 kilometers, cosine 35 degrees which ends up being uh, two significant figures, 2.0 kilometers. Let's do the Y component of the first triangle. Again, using the resultant value from the first triangle. Now I am going to use the sine of the first angle because I'm going uh, for the Y component. So again, with respect to this angle, it's opposite over hypotenuse. So that's, that's going to be sine. Um, that ends up being 
2.5 kilometers times the sine of 35 degrees. And again, two significant figures, uh, 1.4, 1.4 kilometers. <clears throat> now let's do our second triangle. So what's the X component of the second triangle? So I'm going to use that second resultant. And again, I'm going for the X component here. So again, uh, this is the angle adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to use cosine of the second angle. So that ends up being 5.2 kilometers multiplied by the cosine of 22 degrees. And again, two significant figures ends up being 4.8 kilometers. Now the, the Y component of the second triangle. So again, this is my second resultant there. Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to calculate the Y component. So it's going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Right? That's the Y component, it's the opposite of the second angle. That's 5.2 kilometers multiplied by the sine of 22 degrees. And again, two significant figures, 1.9 kilometers. Now that I have both sets of X and Y components, I need to add them together for the total X displacement and the total Y displacement. So I'm going to be adding these together. I'm going to be adding these together. So uh, it would look like this. Right? Right, I'm gonna add together the first X displacement and the second X displacement to, to get this total X displacement. Same thing with the Y components. I'm gonna add the first Y component to the second Y component to get the total Y displacement. So this ends up being uh, 2.0 kilometers plus 4.8 kilometers. And some really hard math. Let's me know that's 6.8 kilometers. Uh, the Y component uh, ends up being 1.4 kilometers plus the other one, 1.9 kilometers. Again, really hard math. It tells me 3.3 kilometers. <clears throat> so what I have now is uh, enough information to draw a right triangle with a X component of 6.8 kilometers and then a Y component of 3.3 kilometers with that nice right triangle. And so here's my resultant. I'll call it D because uh, this, is a, this is a displacement, so we'll roll with that. <clears throat> and now I can actually use my Pythagorean theorem and my inverse tangent function to do magnitude and direction. <clears throat> so I'm still going to use the Pythagorean theorem and inverse tangent function. Uh, the reason I had to do uh, all of this intermediate uh, work is to decompose these two triangles into their parts and then put them back together to make this triangle so that I can do Pythagorean theorem and inverse tangent. Okay, so I'm, I'm hoping that strategy is making sense for you. Um, <clears throat> but either way, here we go. Now I can uh, use the Pythagorean theorem again, uh, solving for uh, the resultant already. Let me start out with this. Okay. Uh, let's plug in the values. Ends up being it's at 6.8 kilometers. We're going to square that plus 3.3 kilometers. We're going to square that. Everything is still under the radical. Uh, and then when we square these things, <clears throat> again, I'm going to stick with two significant figures here. 46 kilometers squared plus 11 kilometers squared. Still under the radical. Let's combine the like terms. So I end up with 57 
kilometers squared, still under the radical. But let's actually square root it now. <clears throat> Two significant figures is going to give me 7.5 kilometers uh, for the magnitude. Now I need the direction, so I'll do the inverse tangent function. So again, direction, uh, meaning what's the, what's the angle of this uh, part of the triangle right here. So inverse tangent function, again, opposite over adjacent. Okay, this is my initial angle. Okay, so I'm, I'm solving for, for this bad boy right here. Opposite over adjacent. That means I'm going to plug 3.3 kilometers over 6.8 kilometers as opposed to the other way around, as opposed to 6.8 divided by 3.3, right? I have to use my definition of tangent in order to, to figure that out. Uh, and again, using two significant figures, the calculator tells me uh, 26 degrees, <clears throat> but, in, but in which direction, okay, in what orientation? So th this plane is, uh, you know, traveling, uh, you know, up and away. So with respect to the ground, okay, with respect to the ground, this angle is being defined as going up that direction, right? 26 degrees. So uh, I can put... Um, above horizontal. 26 degrees above the horizontal. Now, <clears throat> um, you could actually define this a different way. Uh, again, you have to define uh, what you're what you're doing your calculations with respect to. You know, if we weren't talking about with respect to the ground, but respect to the uh, you know vertical component or straight up and down or whatever you wanted to say, you could also uh, talk about this angle coming from this uh, purely vertical component, that's totally fine. Uh, you can still use uh, all of this information, uh, but you would have to the difference between uh, 26 degrees and, and, and 90 degrees, right? Because this would be the, that kind of 90 degrees up. Um, so this could also be communicated as 60, that's 64, yeah, 64 degrees. But since we'd be going, uh, again, kind of down from this, perfectly vertical spot, uh, I would say down from vertical. That's, that's another way to report the same information, right? It's the same information, the same resultant. Uh, we're just looking at it from a different, uh, a different perspective, which is totally fine, but you have to state that perspective.